Hi and welcome to the Running Channel monthly show for May, brought to you by our friends at Wiggle. Yep, we've got another bumper show for you, including all the new launches in the running world, the treadmill challenge with Zwift, and stay tuned right till the end, as we've got another giveaway coming your way too. Here's what's coming up. Let's get stuck in with the launches for this month. It's been a pretty quiet one in the world of running shoe launches, probably as the brands gear up for their autumn and winter launches. We have, however, seen an update from New Balance to their popular Fresh Foam 880 range. We included the V10 in our best running shoes of 2020, and now we have the launch of the V11. It's an everyday neutral road running shoe. The plush Fresh Foam midsole offers bouncy cushioning to absorb the impact from hard surfaces and is available in a choice of width fittings. The main difference in this update is a new engineered double jacquard mesh upper and an improved fit. A couple of our team have put these to the test. Mary says even with her wide foot it felt roomy and wearing them they felt pretty hard but comfy with a bit of bounce in the heels and although they felt heavy out of the box when actually running in them they didn't feel too heavy at all. Andy also tested them and felt that the update actually didn't add much to the V10. In fact he preferred the previous version's knitted upper to this one. New Balance have also updated the Fuel Cell Rebel with the V2 now available. It features New Balance's highest rebound fuel cell performance foam, helping to provide explosive energy return in every step. The deconstructed heel counter provides extra support. It's also got a molded collar for extra stability. The engineered mesh in the upper is breathable for added comfort. The outsole is made from endurance rubber technology to give added durability in high wear areas to help get more out of the shoes. Fit wise, from our testers, they found the Fuel Cell Rebel V2 came up a little bit snug but felt fast to run in a track session and almost felt on par with some of the carbon plated races. This month has also seen a new launch from Enator, the insoles company who Usain Bolt's an ambassador for. They say the PX1 technology is game changing as it's the first shock absorbing technology to be specifically developed for protecting the feet and body from ground forces. They claim that the slight raised heel aids tight muscles, a midfoot drop point helps reduce pain in the big toe and a forefoot pad spreads any localized high pressure when running. So Rick, I actually saw an advert of theirs where they drop an egg onto the insole and claim that because it absorbs so much energy the egg doesn't break so obviously i've got to try it out wow from what height i don't really know rick but um it was about this high so you get the insole oh you get my. the egg about here right this is why i'm really glad we've got the screen for once are you ready go on you won't get egg on your face <gasps> <laughs> well, it didn't work well I don't know whether that was my shoddy uh, aim, but yeah, okay. Um, so, Enator claim that these insoles last over seven times as long as standard ones and have a 60 day money back guarantee, as well as that, 91% of people with foot pain said it improved after wearing the insoles, and 75% said that the insoles had healed their plantar fasciitis. Pretty bold claims there. Anyway, new on the apparel scene this month is Tribe Sports, a British sustainable running company. Their Endure range is made from recycled plastics and ocean waste. The initial kit from them was launched last year and following on from the success of that collection, they're now expanding the range with their launches this month. And sticking with the sustainable apparel theme, this month saw the launch of the Zuma kit, another British running brand featuring high performance sportswear from 100% recycled material. They have singlets, caps, socks, and a microfiber wash bag designed to catch microfibers from clothes in the washing machine, preventing them from polluting the oceans and wildlife. The brand also supports ethical labor practices using factories that pay workers fair wages and offer safe working environments. Zuma also plant a tree for every product that they sell. Now, if you've seen our video about legal performance enhancers, you might already know some of the info about beetroot and how its nitrate content is converted in the body to nitrite and then to nitric oxide, 
which affects blood circulation, among other things. Beat It Sports have a number of products already on the market, like beetroot juice shots, and now they've launched the Nitrate 8000 Concentrated Beetroot Juice crystals. So each two scoop serving contains 400 milligrams of dietary nitrate, which is three times more nitrate than competing beetroot powders and crystals. So Rick, I thought I'd give you a little taste test of this one so you can give us your thoughts. Okay, well, let's try it out. Whoa, that is a strong color. It is. Okay, here goes. Oof. That is powerful. Is it? Yeah. Yeah? Powerful. I mean, it's got a really powerful, sharp, instant hitting taste, but then the aftertaste is actually very subtle aromas of nothing. <laughs> subtle aromas of nothing? Yeah. Well, wow, really you hits you, really hits you to start off with, but no aftertaste. No. Clean. So, we know that the likes of the shots are very intense in flavor and can be an acquired taste. So the thought behind the crystals is that they can be sprinkled on breakfast cereals, yogurt, fruit, or added to water and other drinks. Clever. That's really clever. Lastly, I do love a good book about running. Oh, but I can't reach it. Here we go. In it for the long run is the ultra runner Damien Hall's book. It's a story about his nine years of preparation to break the long-standing, fastest known time on the 261-mile wow. Pennine Way, which he did in July last year. So he knocked three hours off the original time, and he used his record-breaking run to highlight concerns for our climate and ecological emergency. The book talks all about the run itself, as well as the background and preparation, and Damien's experiences of ultra running in general. Another good read there. Seriously impressive. <laughs> so let's take a look at what's been going on in the world of running news this month. And first up, Adidas have revealed the new Team GB and Paralympics GB kit for the Tokyo Olympics. The collection features Adidas technologies, including Prime Green and Prime Blue a series of high-performance recycled materials, including Pali Ocean Plastic. Adidas Heat Ready technology is incorporated into the kit too, to keep athletes cool while competing in what is set to be the hottest games on record. Meanwhile, a petition calling for the cancellation of the games with 350,000 signatures was submitted to organisers this month, reflecting growing public opposition to the event as a fourth wave of COVID-19 infection sweeps Japan. The Stop Tokyo Olympics campaign claims the event should only take place when Japan can welcome visitors and athletes wholeheartedly. Next up, American trail runner Tate Pullman completed a brutal fastest known time route in Colorado, dressed as an inflatable dinosaur. <laughs> hmm. The route is only 1.7 kilometers long, but has more than 600 meters of elevation gain from start to finish. It took him 26 minutes to complete it, so not a patch on the impressive 17 minutes, 45 second record, but he has got a special shout out on the FKT website for his unique run. Nice one, Tate. And us ultra runners are pretty well known for our love of unconventional snacks whilst we're out racking up the miles. I like a pepperami, personally. Really? But one ultra runner from Scotland swears by something pretty odd that helped her grab a fastest known time on the 212 mile Southern Upland Way in Scotland. Anna Rutherford reckons the humble stock cube was the key to her success in breaking the women's record, taking a whopping 17 hours off the previous time. Although too much salt in our diet isn't all that great for us, it is really important for us runners to make sure that we are getting enough sodium, especially if you're running for a long time because you need that sodium to help regulate the amount of fluid in your blood and cells. Let us know if there's any running news stories you think we should feature in our next monthly show. Next up, over to our pal Manny in the physio room to answer your questions all about running injuries. And this month, it's IT band issues.
I'm Manny Ovola, the Running Channel's resident physiotherapist, and this is the Physio Room. Today, I'll be answering questions from the Running Channel community about the key aspects of strength and conditioning in relation to running, as well as queries about common running ailments. If there's a particular injury you're struggling with, then it's worth speaking to a medical professional in person as we can't diagnose your individual problems. However, there are lots of common injuries that we can talk about and hopefully help you with. This month's question is about the IT band. How do I get back to running after IT band syndrome? The iliotibial band, what is it? Well, it's a structure on the outside of our leg. It's a fascia and it's also non-contractile. So what that means, it doesn't contract like muscles do. The IT band is not the main target of our symptoms. The IT band can become painful and uncomfortable because of our mechanics, the way we move at our hip and knee. The source of pain is actually something called a bursa. And the bursa is a sac of fluid which has nerves that infiltrate it or are inside it. The bursa becomes irritated by the IT band and our movement. So what we need to do is make sure that we are moving in a correct way. At times we can have muscles that are tight, especially on the outside of our thigh muscle and our hips. We can stretch the outside of our thigh and we can stretch our hips. We can use a simple quadricep stretch by lifting our foot and bending our knee when standing. I'm sure we've all done this one before. The other things we can do are glute stretches. This we can use a figure four stretch by placing one of our feet on our knees. Along with this, we need to make sure we strengthen our thigh muscle, quadriceps and our hips. So we have made some videos for you, which you can use, such as the follow along runner's knee workout, that's gonna be a great video to improve your strength at your quadriceps. We also have some exercises in there for your hips and glutes. Next, we can use our resistance band video. The resistance band videos can be great to strengthen our gluteal muscles and especially the ones that are important for control whilst running. Lastly, what we can do before and after running to prevent this happening again is also thinking about loading our calf muscles. And we have a calf workout that you can follow. Along with that, we need to think about how we train. If we put back-to-back -back fast sessions together, we can influence the control at our hip and knee. So make sure you're training progressively, getting your rest days, and go through those strength videos that I suggested. I'll be answering more of these questions next month, so don't forget to send them through to physio at therunningchannel.com. Cheers, Manny. I don't know about you, Rick, but back when I first started running, I had a really bad IT band injury. So if anyone's really? watching and they're struggling with it at the mo, I really feel yeah. for you. Stay tuned, because up next, it's Challenge Rick. Ooh. Plus, we still have loads coming up for you. If I was unable to run anymore, it would it would definitely be cycling that I'd go to. So this runner wants to know when it's time to break up with their running buddy. Oh, come on, who would know that? So Rick, you've gone and had surgery, which has put an end to the running challenges for now. And last month we had you taste test some gels, including a secret weapon from me. Yep, I can still taste that one. <laughs> and this month we wanted you to chill out a bit. So we're gonna get you to try out some meditation. Should we see how you got on? Let's do it. Well, this better all be for something. Hmm. Hand scripted prose this month. Hello. Rick, we want you to focus and pay attention as it's time for some meditation. You're going to follow a five minute meditation with Andy Kane. Take a deep breath, relax, and let us know what you think. I mean, this is so me. I am so spa, so zen, so out there with the sound of trickling water. I'm gonna love this. So we focus on the breath. Into the present. Let's get comfy. A 
can't stand. I need to sit. Okay. So starting with the breath. Ah. We take from the here and now. We can't take a breath from the future. We can't take a breath from the past. You can't take a breath from the past. Definitely not. I feel quite weightless now. The pain's all gone. Yeah, I could just hear the handyman trying to put some new pegs on the pergola. I'm not going to get caught up in that. Back to the breath. Oh, the pagola's gone. I feel like I'm floating. Andy, you've got such a lovely voice. When I'm better, do you want to go for a run? It's so nice to do this with no one else in the room so nobody else can hear you making these noises. Oh, wow. Whew. I went in deep there. You know what the good thing about that is? If you've got an injury, you stop thinking and feeling your injury. I mean, it probably, the, the candles helped as well. Can smell the vanilla in the room. Some people don't like vanilla. I, I love vanilla. Love vanilla. Pretty plain kind of guy. And the only thing that actually put me off was Alan, the handyman, putting up a pergola in the back garden. But I mean, you know, sometimes you need to get your pergola up in time for summer. So, Andy, thumbs up, mate. That was a good one. And at one. Andy has an unconventional meditative voice. You wouldn't expect that kind of gravelly northeastern tone to, you know, relax you and make all your muscles drop off to such an extent, but it just works. Your muscles dropped off. Did they drop off? I don't know. They came back on by the end of it. It's fine. <laughs> I think that one was too easy for you, Rick. So can we have something a little bit more outrageous suggested for next month? Please? Oh, no. Drop your ideas <laughs> in the comments. I've got something up my sleeve anyway. Now it's time for Ask TRC. I love reading the questions you send in to Ask TRC. Such a wide variety come in every month. And don't forget to email asktrc at therunningchannel.com for the chance to have your question featured next month. And also, just a massive thanks to everyone who's been asking me how I'm doing after my surgery. It's been so nice, Anna. No, it is so lovely to see all the support that you've got. Thanks, team. So, first up, it's Lorraine Fraser, who emailed in to ask, I drink loads of tea, sometimes two litres a day, but often go for three or so days without actually drinking anything else, even on running days. Will this do to hydrate me? I don't often feel dehydrated, but wondering if pure water has an advantage over tea. Well, to start with the rain, I didn't think I'd find someone who actually drinks more tea in a day than I do. I was just about to have a sip, but there's none left but there was something in it before. Uh, the European Food Standards Agency says that up to 30% of our fluid intake comes from food, especially fruit and vegetables. They recommend that adults should make up the rest with about three pints for women and four pints for men of non-alcoholic fluid today. So that does, good news, include your tea. A lot of people believe that tea and coffee are diuretics and dehydrate you because of their caffeine content. And that is actually a bit of a myth because anything below 400 milligrams a day of caffeine won't dehydrate you. So tea and coffee can count towards your daily fluid intake. The next question comes from Ray Self. Ray, who says he is 
constantly getting lost on his runs. Even after doing a route five times, he could miss a turn the sixth time, so he regularly uses navigational apps. His actual question is, do you ever get lost on runs? Rick? Yes, Anna, actually, I do get lost on runs, but it's more than when I'm going running and I'm away from home. You know, when you're on holiday or something and you go oh, and running down on a beach and you go, well, can I find my way back? And by the time you've got back, it's the next day and you've missed some of your holiday and you thought that was you know, a complete waste of time, wasn't it? <laughs> so lastly, Ask TRC turns agony aunt and uncle. I, am, I can't wait for your response to this, Rick. So I've kept this runner's name anonymous. Oh, it's juicy. In case their running partner watches too. So we had a pretty long email detailing this one. This is the condensed version or as much as I could condense. So this runner wants to know when it's time to break up with their running buddy. Ouch. There's some issues with different goals here. One wants to run an ultra, whereas the other prefers shorter distances. They run at different paces when they're together. And although this runner's running partner runs slower than her when they're together, when she checks the run that her partner's doing without her, they're faster and longer. So the question is, is it time for a new running buddy? Should she just run by herself for now? Or should she stop comparing her partner's solo runs to her runs and just take it one run at a time? This is a tricky one. It can be difficult to run with someone who isn't the same pace as you. And actually, it's really important to avoid running too slowly to stay with someone who doesn't match your speed, as you could end up getting injured because of the extra pressure that it puts on your biomechanics. Also, don't forget that while you're running with a buddy, you're probably having a bit of a chat, which means those paces will be slower than when your buddy runs on her own without you. Yeah, good points. And actually, maybe just have a word with your running pal. See where you stand with each other. If you've got a specific goal race in mind, then it could be worth speaking to them and telling them that you need to do some solo sessions for that race. That way, you'll get a bit of time off from each other so you can check out your own potential, but without breaking off the friendship entirely. Good advice. We should do this all the time. Yeah, hope that's that helps. A, yeah, <laughs> that's all for now. But if you have a burning question for the team, make sure you drop it in the comments or email asktrc at therunningchannel.com and it could feature in our next show. So time for the treadmill challenge with Zwift and I've got to start with an apology for Manny. So last episode, I wrongly put his time up on the leaderboard as 1 minute 39 seconds, which a lot of you quite rightly pointed out would have put him bottom of the leaderboard. I can confirm he did in fact stay on for 1 minute and 49 seconds and is in second to last place, which I have rectified. Well done, Anna. This month, it's running channel resident Olympian Andy Badley. I reckon he's got that competitive edge that will make him want to win, no matter how much it's hurting. Three, two, one, go. First question, who won gold at the 2016 Rio Olympics in the men's marathon distance? Alec Kipchoge. Correct. Who was the first man to run a mile in exactly four minutes? In exactly four minutes? Um, Landy? <laughs> no, incorrect. Put the speed up. Next question. Who is the Greek goddess of running? Nike? No, incorrect. Put the speed up. Not a good start. <laughs> Next one. What is the current qualifying time for the Boston Marathon if you are a man aged 45 to 49? Oh, come on. Who would know that? 49. Um, 2.59.59? Incorrect. Put the speed up. No. Next question, if you ran the height of Mount Everest, how many 3K distances would that be to the nearest whole 3K? Three? Correct. Next question, if you were running a marathon on a track, how many laps would you need to run to the nearest lap? 105. Correct. 
A long jump run-up is usually 40 meters in length. How many run-ups would you have to do to cover 10K? 25, 250. Correct. Next, the Trans Atlas Marathon is an ultra marathon event in the high Atlas Mountains in Morocco. How long is the whole event in kilometers? 204. Incorrect, put the speed up. <laughs> Next one, what famous quote did Oprah Winfrey say after finishing a marathon? Let's go, and let's, let's go and interview Lance Armstrong. Put it up. How many steps do runners climb doing the Great Wall of China marathon to the nearest thousand steps? Oh, behave yourself. <laughs> There's no way anyone can do that. Nearest steps. Put China. The speed up. Incorrect. Right. Hey. <laughs> Next one. How many ligaments are in a human foot? Oh, lots. Um, <laughs> Twenty-five. No, way more. Put the speed up. Oh, I don't know whether I can. Next one. In what year was the marath marathon event introduced for women in the Olympics? Oh. Uh, 96. No, incorrect. Put the speed up. Next one. When it builds up in the body, what can lactic acid change the taste of? Everything. Blood. <laughs> No, incorrect. Put the speed I'm up. I'm done. 22 kph. I think I'm going to pull a hammy. Got to stop. Oh, <laughs> disgusting. Could I have gone faster? Absolutely not. 22 kph. It seems about my max speed. It's not that much faster than Kipchoge runs for two hours. Kill me now. Well, well, well. He couldn't quite hold on long enough to beat... Vassos! Oh, Andy me. is in second place on the leaderboard with a time of 3 minutes and 28 seconds. I bet he is kicking, kicking himself! himself. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, over to our miles and kilometres segment. Some quick fire running questions with friends of the running channel. This month we hear from Leanne Davies, the founder of the online running community Run Mummy Run. I definitely measure in miles instead of kilometers. I mainly listen to podcasts at the moment. I am enjoying Dr. Rangan Chatterjee, which is a really good one, and also Conversations of Inspiration with Holly Tucker. Um, she was the founder of Not On The High Street. I measure in distance mainly, but if I don't want much pressure, I'll just do time. My key recovery tricks are stretch, definitely, and probably a massage gun. Um, those are the two things that I would use. I'm not training for anything currently. I would like to do some races, but the next races I do will be with friends and just enjoying being back together again because I can't wait to see my friends. So that would be the first sort of training or racing that, that I do. I was kept motivated through the last year, um, again, with my friends, seeing my buddies when I could, you know, during the lockdowns, going on my one-to-one -one buddy runs. It was really nice to see them and they kept me motivated throughout when it was possible to run with people. Inspiring me at the moment is Nikki Spinks. I think she's amazing. Um, I've enjoyed watching um, her and all her achievements, especially since um, being diagnosed with breast cancer and all the achievements she's made since that point in her life. I think she's just incredible what she's achieved. My best running memory is probably the London Marathon 2016 I enjoyed the Paris Marathon as well but the London Marathon my knee went halfway through and I called on the Run Mummy Run community to help me and on, on the Facebook group and they they pulled me through they were wonderful um, and it was quite an emotional um, finish because I was doing it for a friend that sadly had passed away with cancer um, it was very emotional and yeah it was a fantastic day if I was unable to run anymore it would it would definitely be cycling that I'd go to. Uh, I think I would miss if I couldn't run the outdoors. And I think cycling would definitely provide me with um, the joy that I get from running. So being outdoors on the trails. Um, yeah, so cycling definitely. 
Oh, I loved hearing from Leanne there. Don't forget, as ever, we have a competition with Wiggle this month to win a voucher to spend on running gear or whatever else you fancy, really. All you need to do is click on the link in the description and answer a question about what you've just seen in the show. Easy peasy. All the T's and C's are on the link too. Good luck and thanks so much for watching. We will see you next time on The Running Channel.